What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. So, uh, real quick, I'm not sure if there's any live streams going on right now. I hope there's no live streams going on right now. Um, <clears throat> what's up, man? So, I can't read from here. Let me go grab my glasses, you guys, because I cannot read from here. Oh, all right. So there we go. Now I can read a little bit, you guys. Um, first to like the button there, John. First to hit the like button, John says. Let's get it on. Oh, Shadow Ops RC. What's up, man? So, guys, what you see in front of us, this beautiful SG30, you guys. Uh, I just want to give a huge shout out real quick before we start this, uh, start the live stream um, to uh dave marshall air marshal mondays uh last night uh he was able to um run me through the program on his dx uh also another shout out to skip bill rc and shadow ops rc um <clears throat> both of those guys were per, were pretty helpful uh eric we had it right last night we were just on the wrong we were just on the wrong stream we were supposed to go to the next screen over uh, and i'll show you that real quick while we're here that way you guys know what to do when you guys go to hook yours up, okay? Um, so I'll turn the radio on real quick. Um, the package that I got, you guys, came with the nice 5,000 smart battery with the plane, AS3X, the whole nine yards. It's, got, it's the whole package, the, the complete package, you guys, that they were giving away. Or huh, not giving away. <laughs> they sure they sure are giving it away, I promise you that. Um Michael Honeychuck, what's up, man? Thomas, how you doing, buddy? Welcome to the stream. I'm going to get you a blue wrench, Thomas. Let me get you a blue wrench. Uh, if you show up at the beginning of next month for our... Um, if you show up uh, at the beginning of next month, so it will be the 29th or something like that, or the 28th, uh, we're doing another giveaway, and I will give you a number, and you will be entered into the drawing. We pull a number out of the hat. Whoever's number we pull, they win. So that's the way it works. We just gave away a, a uh, free wing T-33, and last month we gave away a flight line Bearcat. And uh, also we sent out another contest winner's plane last week. It was um, a uh, Dynam 262 for our buddy Love RC. Um and then Hangar 51 won this month. He won a T33 uh, from Free Wing. So yeah, man, I, I give away some real things here. Uh, all, all good, all good stuff, guys. Um, well, I try to make it as nice as I possibly can, you guys. I don't want to send you guys a piece of shit. You know what I'm saying? I want, I want you guys to, uh, I want you guys to enjoy what you get from for the giveaways here. Um, and I like to go through places such as Motion RC. Uh, and stuff like that so that I make sure that if anything goes wrong with the plane that you do buy, we can make sure that we get in touch with Motion RC and get your issues fixed. Uh, I do like using Motion RC a lot. I like using Arrows Hobby a lot as well. Uh, we do use a lot of Arrows Hobby in here. I think we've given away a couple of planes from Arrows, a uh, Marlin and a um, Bigfoot. So we give it, we give some good planes away here, man. Good planes, planes that I don't have that I wish I had in my collection, and I just give them away to you guys uh, once a month. Uh, they get sent directly to your door. You don't have to worry about anything. It just ships right from the place, right to your front door. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to get into this radio. I want to show you guys real quick exactly the steps to get to the point where you need to get uh, in order to uh, arm your switch for safe. Uh, so let's get this to focus in, hopefully. So the first thing you want to do is you want to hit this button. 
You want to scroll all the way down until you get to system setup. Once you're at system setup, you're going to hit that. It's going to say yes. Do you want to? Do you want to hit yes? Then you want to go down to channel assignment. Now, the first one's going to tell you that channel 7 is on auxiliary 2, which is right where you want it. Then we're going to go over to the next page. Then we're going to go to channel 7, which is aux 2. And as you can see, I have mine set to G. Mine's on channel G, aux 7, or aux 2, channel 7 on G, which is this switch up here, which is good for me. That's the, exactly which one I want it. And then you're going to click on it. Then, once you back out into Acro, now you're coming back into Acro. Okay. You're going to take both of these sticks, and you're going to pull them down into the corners, just like this. Okay, just like that. One down in that corner, one down in that corner. And you are going to flip whatever switch you want. You're just going to flip it cr like crazy until you hear the plane start to go do, 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 do. And that means it's done. Once you've completed it, now it's on the switch which you have it issued to. So all the way down on my switch, that's safe on. All the way up, that's just uh, flying with the uh, AS3X which I'll probably just keep it right there. I don't ever really want to use safe uh, unless I am in a really horrible situation. And then I'll hit it just to get the plane to self right. Um, but other than that, you guys, the plane's ready to go. Um, depending on how the field looks over there where I fly, I, I, I may fly it. Uh, we're at least going to bring out some hand toss jets tomorrow, me and Tyler. I actually have to get those ready tonight and find the 3S batteries to start charging them so that he can fly that. And then I'm also going to take this out, and we're going to see about getting a maiden flight on this, possibly. Um, it, like I said, weather permitting and the way the field feels, if it feels, you know, really soggy and nasty, then I won't do it. I just, I don't want to put this plane uh, in any type of uh, bad situation. You know, it's like $600, $700 worth of plane here, you guys. And uh, they're expensive, but they're nice, you guys. They are. Uh, let me move over here. Let me shut this radio off in a second. I'll fire the plane up. I just want to check your comments out real quick. You guys, I have my laptop over here. Um, that is a DX8 transmitter. Um, how you doing, Skip? Good to see you in here, buddy. Ethan RC, what's up, man? Hey, uh, Ethan, uh, we're looking for boxes right now for your and Eric stuff. Uh, it's really hard to find a box to send these things out because the what we're finding is we don't need very big boxes. We just need some smaller slender boxes. And her order is coming in. Uh, Hannah, when did you say your order was coming in when you get all the boxes? Tomorrow. tomorrow. Okay, yeah. So tomorrow the orders come in for Hannah's work. And uh, then she gets all kinds of boxes, like long ones, shorter ones, you know, skinnier. Uh, long, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. So anyways... Uh, I did this last time and that's how I ended up finding Roy's box and a couple other people's boxes where I sent their stuff out. Um, yeah, this is a, G, a DX8 Gen, Gen 2. I actually bought this from Michael Roshka. He's one of the guys in our community. Super awesome dude. GB Lennon, what's up? Jermaine Spencer, how you doing, buddy? Uh, looking for a DX6 or a DX8. Well, you're in the right spot, man. I'm sure some, one of these guys in here probably have a DX8 that they don't mind selling or a DX6. I'm pretty sure of it. I promise you that. Somebody in this in this chat right now, just these 20 people probably have one for sale, bro. <clears throat> but anyways, uh, I wanted to fire the plane up. And while we're sitting here just chilling, um, that's good to hear, Jermaine. Good to hear, brother. Um All right, so I'm gonna I, just before I do this, I'm gonna be looking down at the radio for a second, you guys. I want to program a name in for this plane and everything.
Oh shit. Hold on, buddy. What's up? So the water wasn't the problem. Yeah. The was. What? The box. What was wrong with the box? It's not, it's not working. That's, that box is not working. No. Uh, I, one I, I, hold on, I have one sitting around here. I can give to you. Hold on. Are you getting ready to do a stream? I already am doing a stream. I think there's one down in this box right here. Uh, hold on, let me look real quick, I'm not, Kyle. I'm not sitting here. Yeah, I know you don't want to be on camera. Hold on. Hold on, guys. I got to grab something for my boy. Okay, the last one goes on my cell phone. You can use it. Stop it. Stop moving planes. Yeah, it'll fit. Of course it'll fit. All right, so now I got the model name in there. That's good. Uh, now let's put, let's do some high rates and some low rates. Uh, 16 channels for, uh, the, okay, you guys are just talking among yourselves. All right, cool, cool, cool. So let me get, let me get back to this and then I'll, and then I'll get to the computer, you guys. Uh, I just wanted to plug this in real quick. Uh, once we do, I'll move the laptop uh, down here so that I can see you guys. Um, all right, so. Here we go. Okay, so now we need a rate switch. What should I use for rates? Actually, we need to go to servo setup first. Um, they want flap on switch D. Can I change that? Oh, I can. Put that on. Wow, B. Mm. 
Oh, this thing, this thing is getting easier and easier to use now that I'm messing with it, you guys. I'm starting to figure shit out pretty quick. Um, servo setup, okay. Expo, okay, here we go for Expo. I usually put my rates over here, but, oh, now I can. Yes, now I can. Okay. So, and then we're going to see if everything works after I get it done, you guys. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I'm not paying attention to the chat right now, you guys. I'm just in my radio real quick. And uh, what I'm doing is I'm just setting up some rates real quick, just a high and a low rate. And I'm right there right now. So that's what I'm doing right now. Shit. Okay. So I'm going to keep it at 100%, and I'm going to go 25% Expo on high rate. And then on my low rate, I'm going to go 25 and then on my low rate i am going to go i want to go down. I like, one, I like 70. I always find that it's always the low rate. Every time I put a low rate in, it's the low rate is usually right where I want to be, like all the time. Put that on 25% Expo as well. And then elevator, I don't like to mess with too much. I like a lot of elevator. Always. Constantly. Um, but we'll go ahead and put that on switch H as well. And we'll start it out at 100%. 30% Expo. I like 30 on my tail. Flip that. And then we're only going to go down to 85 on the, uh, on the elevator because I usually like a lot of elevator for the low. I'll probably end up putting that back once I fly it the first time. And then in 30% Expo. All right, so. And then I leave the rudder alone. I don't mess with the rudder. I like a lot of rudder just so that I only have to use short little movements on it. If I have to adjust while I'm landing, I just have to tap it. Um, just boop, and then it'll, you know, the, the, it'll fix the crab. Um, typically when I fly, I don't fly in crosswinds. So uh, my field is either coming one way or the other. So that's all, it's always worked out to my benefit to have that I've always had a headwind to fly into. Um, it's literally the... <laughs> Very rare that we show up there and it's crosswinding on that field. Uh, it's usually going straight this way or straight the other way or kind of just at a little bit of an angle. Um, but, uh, yeah, we, we rarely ever um, have a crosswind at that field. Uh, okay, so it looks like I already have a battery in here. Um, well, hopefully that doesn't fall. Hold on. I think that's going to fall, so. Um, I keep seeing Jeff, uh, custom RC, you guys, Jeff's custom RC, uh, has a stinger 90. Mine was in a, in a pretty decent accident. Uh, you can watch that on my channel where I, I had the ailerons backwards on my, uh, stinger 90 when I went to take off and, uh, she started drifting to the right. So obviously I gave it left and that gave it more right. She ended up spilling and I got her all put back together nicely, but she's got a bunch of dings and nicks and punctures all over her from that crash. And um, it really deserves to be a fly-ready plane. Um, so I'm going to give it a nice paint job. Um, I was thinking about going with the same color that I did with the um, um, with the uh, F-18, the black. And then I want to do, like, yellow highlights. And then I want to get, like, a bumblebee put on it somewhere. Um, I don't know, or yellow with black highlights. I'm not sure. I want it to be the bumblebee jet. You know what I mean? Like from, from Terminator or from uh, transformers. I want it to be the bumblebee jet. Like I want to get some graphics from Cali Graffer graphics with the, uh, like the Autobot uh, sign and everything. I want it to look just like 
if Bumblebee was a jet, you know what I'm saying? So I, I already have an idea what for it. I've already got it kind of planned out and what I want to do pretty creative. Um, and you know, my, my son wanted to do like star scream and I would be like, that would be an awesome one to do on the F 22 Raptor, the big F 22 Raptor. That would be a sick scheme to put on that because that's what, uh, that's what star scream really was. in the transformers movie was a fucking Raptor and it would look sweet. Um, but let's plug this thing in and let's see if our rates are working. Uh, let's check out, let's see if the gyro is working and safe and stuff. And, uh, I think, I think, I think it will be. That safe kicking in right there. You can hear it makes a completely different sound than if it was just regularly bound. Um, Lots of room in this hatch, you guys, to get the wire down and to get it nice and shut, nice and even. Uh, it's just a really, really, really thought out plane. Uh, I don't know if they've carbon fibered the nose in this thing or not. I'm not sure if this is all carbon fibered up here. I'm not sure what they did as far as structural stuff. But uh, I can't see any carbon fiber from here. I think I shined a flashlight through the other day and saw some up here. Um uh, but I don't know. It's, it's hard to tell, and it's hard to tell where it stops and when it starts. So I think I might carbon fiber the nose of this just in case. You never know what, what can happen, you guys. I, I've done that with a lot of my planes in here. The, um, uh, the Scorpion, uh, uh, yeah, the uh, Super Scorpion on my wall, that whole nose of that plane is 100% carbon fiber back to the wing root. Um, so, yes, this thing does have lights on it, you guys. Check that out got lights let me put this uh let me put this radio down real quick and uh we'll pick this plane up and show you guys the nav lights on this thing uh there's the green red back there see if i can get it in frame oh that looks so oh what's he doing what's he oh he's pulling the cobra oh cobra oh at nighttime what <laughs> yeah, son. That thing looks sick as shit, boy. Hold on. We got to get these gear down, right? It's not going to look right unless we put some gear down, right? Let's hope all the switches are right. Um, so I'm going to hold it just like that. Just like that. We'll take that off of there, wherever that came from. We'll hold it like that. Shit, yes, 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 yes. Hopefully I don't drop this thing. Uh, look at that, dudes. That is sick. <laughs> this thing's bad, boy. Look at that shit. I'm gonna actually, I, if I can, I'm gonna leave the gear down. Do I have enough room on the table? Oh, plenty of room on the table. Yes. Look at that. It looks so sexy, you guys. The freaking thing looks so nice. I wish the gear doors went back up after they uh, they went down, though. That's the only thing that I'm not. Uh... All right, so let's try our safe button. Now we're in safe. Let's see if it's working. Oh, yeah, gyro's going nuts. It's going, it's going nuts. Now we'll take it out of safe. Boom, out of safe. Nothing. Good. Yes, there we go, man. So it's, it is good to go. Let's check our rates. All right, let's go this way. Oh, I like it. I like it. <laughs> oh, my goodness, boys. Oh, my goodness. Hold on. Let me turn this light back on. Oh, man. Oh, it's sick, you guys. So sick. Oh, God, that sounds so good. Oh, yes. Yes. I'm loving it, you guys. I, I absolutely love it. This is a must-have plane. I don't care. I, I say that about every plane. This is a must-have. This is a must-have. But there are the must-haves, man, like the Avani, like... Like the F-22 Raptor, the L-39. I mean, I think those are must-have planes. I, I think that the Sabre is a must-have plane. The F-15. Um, 
I think everyone should have a free wing 262. I mean, that's just, that's a given. Um, <laughs> the FMS P47, the FMS Tiger Cat, these are the, the F14. That, those are what I consider must-have planes. And if you look at my collection in here, you'll see that I have must-have planes. I don't, I don't have a bunch of the, like the intermediate stuff or the in-between stuff. Um, I guess you can consider that uh, a, the A6 down there, uh, the intruder. I guess you could consider that one of those in-betweeners. But um, and then I have a lot of Falco Wolf planes. I got a Hobby King like uh, Vampire down here, just because I wanted to see how the vampires flew before I bought the large scale one from Freewing, um, which is still on my list. I think that's a must-have one too. Um, but yeah, guys, this is sick, man. This is absolutely ridiculous. All right, let me get this unplugged. Um, turn the radio off, and then we'll we'll chill with you guys for a second. Bledsoe uh, has a stream tonight, you guys. What time does Bledsoe start his stream? I don't want to step on his toes, you guys. Hey, uh, Fireblade, I got something for you, bro. Check this out. Hold on. I got, I got you something real quick. Oh, look at that. Uh, just going to shake it for you, baby. Shake it for me, baby. Uh, <laughs> look at that. Look at that end runner action, bro. Look at that end runner action, bro. That's for you, Fireblade. That's for you, buddy. If you guys don't know, Fireblade <laughs> likes to see up the he likes to see up the skirt, as me and Skip like to call it. He likes to see up the skirt. He wants to see what's going on with that power. Uh, so we always let him see. We always give him a little peek. <laughs> Fireblade. <laughs> hey Skip, it's Fireblade. <laughs> what's up, Fireblade? Oh man, so super sick, you guys. Let me shut that off. But yeah, like I said, I did buy this one with the with the five thousand battery that they give you. It's only a thirty C though, guys. Um, and my experience with these twin engine planes like this, you want you want to let your C rating be a little high because um, when you go to start to pull the power out of that battery, um, you're like the plane wants to overdraw the battery when you're at thirty. You know, thirty. Thirty just. That doesn't seem a lot. It doesn't seem 30C doesn't seem like a lot. And it's not, but these planes want to pull the power out of them so fast and so quickly that 30C may not just, it just may not be enough. Um, and then the batteries start to puff up and swell and stuff uh, because they're getting overworked. You know what I mean? So uh, I think that if you're flying a twin engine plane like this, you should have no less than 50C. Um, and if you can find a 60 to 80 C or even a 70, 80 C to 120 C with a burst of 120, those are the ones that I like. Um, they always seem to not puff up. They always seem, the ones with the higher C ratings always seem to last longer than the ones with the lower C ratings. The low C ratings, those ones seem to puff up and get bad pretty quick. Uh, but when you have a higher C rating pack, they seem, they seem to always stay nice. Uh, and you can leave them charged forever, man. I've left batteries charged for months and months and months on end and, and then gone to use them and they were just as good as the day I bought them. So um, I just honestly believe in the fact that a battery has a certain amount of life in it. And when that life is gone, it's gone. I don't think you can really damn. I mean, I have seen no proof in leaving your batteries charged and then uh, not using them. And then they have a, a fall off in power. I haven't noticed that at all, you guys. That isn't something that I've ever noticed. Um, I do decharge my batteries a bit. Like, say if I had a fully charged battery, I actually decharge it all the way down to, like, 3.95, 3.20, and then I charge it back up again. That's what I do if I leave a battery out for too long unchar or charged up all the way. Um, and then I typically, when, I, when, I, when I'm not going to use them and I know I'm not using them for a while, like my 3S batteries that I have around here somewhere, I put those on store. Um, before I, uh, before I, uh, put them away for the, uh, summer last year. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, we're about ready to see if those ones are okay. So, um, I'm taking those ones, I'm taking those ones out tonight and, um, Tyler wants to fly his, uh, little F86 Sabre tomorrow, the 64 millimeter one sitting down there. He wants to fly that tomorrow and 
if I don't take this jet out, I'll be taking out my Flightline Corsair because it is my favorite right now. Uh, the Tiger Cat needs some work because of that crash that we had, you guys. I have to refashion a uh, have to refashion a um, the new uh, canopy that I bought for it. It's not quite fitting right, and I don't know why, uh, but I'll figure it out. Um, but yeah, I'm over here at the computer, guys, checking you guys out. So what's up? When does uh, when does um, Bledsoe have his uh, live stream? John Nukes, what's going on? <laughs> Fireplace. <laughs> yeah, it is, man. It is a big baby. You see the Cadillac, boy. Like, uh, the paint on this thing is really, really nice. Uh, it's nicer than most planes. It almost reminds me of the Flightline Corsair and the Flightline Bear, or, yeah, the Flightline uh, Tiger Cat. Uh, it's got a lot of detail in it, and the paint job is really nice. It's got a lot, and then it's got a lot of nice, thick, um, dark stickers, like the dark, the, these red and blue and the white. That's, that's actually a sticker. And uh, they're really, really nice. They're almost like a really solid, like kind of like matte colored vinyl. And they're really, really nice. Um, really nice. Um, I'm thinking about, go I have some silver stars, silver and white stars left over from my old MiG-17 MiG uh, kit. And I'm thinking about covering these up right here with uh, all the stars on the plane with those uh, those white and black ones. Just, just to give it a little different look. Um, but it should be all right. It should be, it be, should be sick. Jeff, you out of here, man. Gotta go eat guys. Jeff, we'll see you later, man. Have a good night, bud. The air marshals in here. Air marshal. I gave you a sick ass, um, shout out at the beginning of the stream. If you want to go back and watch it, uh, go ahead real quick. Um, uh, yeah, I shouted you out big time in the stream, man, for, for, uh, getting me hooked up, um, last night on your show. Um, also shout out to skip bill RC. And Shadow Ops RC gave those guys a shout out as well for getting me started. Um, but yeah, guys, super, super, super nice plane. Um, did anyone? Does anyone still? I, I'm trying to figure out when Bledsoe does his uh, his live stream. I can't remember when it is. Man, I just cut my finger. Uh, uh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, oh God. It's, it does sting, though. It, do, it does sting a bit. I'm not going to lie. It, uh, it's one of those stings that just kind of piss you off instead of, like, hurt. They just, it just makes you mad. <sighs> Damn it. How the hell did I even do that? Twenty one hundred. Okay. Oh, 24 people in here. What's going on, guys? Anything else you want to see? Anything else you want to see? Oh, let's uh, let's talk about the Focke Wolf real quick, guys. Um, so um, I uh, took the retract out, the, the one that broke on the flight, the one that wouldn't come down. And what was happening is the screw mechanism that screws in, the mechanism which pulls on the strut to make it open and close, uh, it fell out of the motor and it, that particular screw mechanism, when it goes into the motor, there's a machine that actually crimps that thing down so that it never comes out. It's locked in place for good forever. It doesn't go anywhere. Uh, well, when you look at it, it wasn't crimped down. Uh, so at the manufacturer, it actually wasn't fixed completely. It wasn't, it didn't get crimped down and it got put together anyway. So when I got it, uh, the retract went to come down. And as soon as it got to the end, that thing came out of the mount. Uh, it came the the shaft came out of the motor completely, and um, it was busted. And it would and it, it would it wouldn't lock down at that point either. You're not gonna and that's why the wheel didn't lock down in that flight. So when I hit the, the gear, dug in a little bit, it caused that one to buckle because it wasn't locked in. And then the plane spun to the to the right and then ripped that other retract right out. So that's just just exactly the right series of events that happened uh, to make to make that up. Uh, that retract rip out of that plane. The other one was just fine. Even though it got ripped out, that thing was working flawlessly when I, when I tried it over and over again, when I got home. Uh, but I took them back to the hobby store. They were nice enough to take them and order me a new pair. They'll, sh they should be there either tomorrow or Thursday. Uh, and I'll go pick those up. We have a snowstorm coming Saturday. So I want to get out and I want to, I want to fly this Falkable again before then. Um, 
it was a pretty sweet flying plane, you guys. I can't lie. Um, it's, it's your typical Falka Wolf. That's all I can say. It's your typical Falka If you've flown a Falka Wolf before, then um, that's what you're getting. You're, you're getting you're getting a Falka Wolf. You're getting a lot of nose in. Uh, our our tail, tail heavyish looking flybys where it almost seems like the nose of the Falka Wolf always wants to stay up a little bit. Like it's stuck up. Like like a stuck up snob in school, just, and it had every right to be because it butchered everything that it came across. But, uh, it just kind of has that flight presence. And if you use flaps on a Falka wolf, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, there's no need to use the flaps on a Falka wolf. It slows down really quick because of that big front wide circular nose that it's got, uh, and the big flat wingspan, the flat front on it. And the big, the, the, the leading edges on the plane are really thick. Uh, it, it just slows down nicely by itself. I mean, you can cut the throttle and she'll glide if you want her to. And you can really just kind of feather her and put her down real nicely. And that's what I did in that video. I just had a bad retract, guys. If, 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 um, if that rail, the retract would have never failed, it probably would have pushed right through that mud a little bit. It may have nosed over, um, but it sure as wouldn't have spun around and ripped the retracts out for sure. It wouldn't have been that violent. Um, uh, I'll probably fly the SU-30. I want to, I want to fly the Falka Wolf a little bit more, but I might take this out tomorrow. I might, I just not, I'm not quite sure yet. Um, I'm going to take it out tomorrow. If the field looks presentable and it's not soggy and wet and nasty, then I'll fly it. If, it, if it's gross out there, you guys, I'm not going to set this down in grossness. I'm just not going to do it. I don't want to have to take this wheel piece off on the front. And um, I've heard um, even on even on the website for eFlight, if you're going to fly in grass, they want you to take that off. Well, at my grass at my field, my grass is so short; it's almost like it's almost like putting green stuff. Um, I wouldn't have to take that off, but if it's nasty and muddy and stuff, then I'm going to have to, and I don't want to have to do that. So, uh, like I said, it all it all depends on uh, what the field looks like tomorrow. We are going to be out flying tomorrow. Um, I'm going to take my Corsair and fly that a couple of times because I got two nice new packs that I want to run through uh, completely. Uh, I've already done it to one, probably almost killed it. Um, we brought it back to life though. Uh, and uh, we're going to bring out the little Saber and, and this guy. And uh, if it's nice enough, I'll fly this, you guys. Um, but uh, if it's not, I'll just fly the Corsair and I'll, I'll be happy as pie with that. Probably better when the field's frozen. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that's what's happening right now, Dave. It's super, super cold out right now. It's like probably like 15, 16 degrees outside. And then it's going to be right around 20 to 25 tomorrow. So that's still below freezing a bit. And uh, we should be able to take this thing out and fly it if the ground's nice and hard like that. Yeah, you're right. Absolutely. Yeah, it's like uh, simple, 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 uh, simple chemistry. You want the ground to be... Um, nice and hard and frozen. So it doesn't matter if it's wet as long as that water and that earth is frozen. Uh, it's just when it starts to get warm and it gets soggy and that's what happened to the poor Falka Wolf over here. Um, we just hit some, some soggy, soggy dirt and she dug in a bit. Um, the main cause of the accident though was the failed retract though, the, the pen falling out of that and the strut just being loose and not locked. Uh, that was the real culprit of the, of the entire uh, mess. Uh, look at the, uh, smart battery, step it up and they go, oh, you saw, oh, Dave, okay, so yeah, the smart battery, bro, uh, this actually came with the plane, I was actually saying that it's only a 30C, and I was thinking, you know, whenever I fly twin engine planes, um, I always like to be flying at least a 50C or a 60C, every time I've used a low C, low rate, low C rating battery, uh, on a twin engine plane, boy, it puffs the shit out of those batteries. Get puffy real quick. Uh, you burn them out real quick too. Um, but um, the higher, the lower C rating batteries, these things are gonna puff the shit up, man. I think. I don't know. I don't know if I trust it. I don't know. I would, I would fly this in uh, the um, the P51 that I'm getting next week or next month. I would fly. I'm gonna fly this battery in that P51, and I'm probably gonna grab another one for the P51. Uh, because I, I plan on flying that P51 a lot once I get it, you guys. Um, and from what I've seen, I'm going to turn my rudder, like my steering, 
uh, I'm going to put that on a super low rate where the rudder is barely turning at all, like just a little bit, because I'm watching some of you guys on those takeoffs with the P51, and that thing is so squirrely. And then when you hit your rudder backwards, it just seems like it's a little too much, and that thing comes swinging way back the other way violently. God, I'm still gushing blood, you guys. Holy shit. Um, so I think I'm going to turn my servo down on my rudder to like barely nothing so that when it, when it does kick over, if, even if I throttle it way over on accident, it's only going to give a little bit and it, it'll straighten out real nicely. Um, I, that's my theory anyways, that, that, that's, that's my theory. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's going to work, but hopefully it should, it should help anyway. Uh, but yeah, the smart battery came with the plane, Dave. Um, but I think I'm going to hold off using this. I have some really good C rated batteries. I got. Uh, well, no, that's an Admiral 4540C. That, that battery is actually for my L39 and my Avani. Um, and I also apply that battery in the Havoc as well. Uh, but, yeah, we'll probably take it out tomorrow. And hopefully the ground is hardened and uh, it's good to go uh, because I would definitely love to fly this plane. If not, I, I'm going to fly my Corsair. I, I love the Corsair, you guys. I think the Corsair is probably um, one of the finest warbirds that have uh that have come out in the last couple of years it's my favorite one that's come out in the last couple of years uh i do like the tiger cat sitting behind me but if i had to pick one to fly where i would feel like 100 percent comfortable it would be the the uh flight line course air i i like that plane i like the way it flies i think it handles well it, it's it's probably the nicest like i said the nicest warbird that's come out in a couple of years i haven't flown the p51 yet uh, but this one doesn't give you no song and dance off the runway. She gets going, she gets her butt up, and she goes. She doesn't She doesn't yank to the left or yank to the right. Um, she's just a perfect, all-around, beautiful model to fly. Got to have some nose weight in her, but uh, what plane doesn't these days? Transfer property. Keep my hands warm and all. He's got a heated transmitter cover. That's sick. Fly mostly at home, but this is changing due to the building around me. Yep. Ground's plenty hard here, Battle. Yeah, I know. It is It is right now, too. I'm on, it, it, Right now here, it is, too. And the reason it is because it's setting up the fucking snow. It's going to snow here pretty soon. Uh, this weekend, it's going to snow. And usually, right before we get a snowstorm, it gets really cold, and the, hard, the, floor, the ground hardens up real nicely. And then all that snow just sticks to it even better. Um, but, yeah. Cool plane, guys. I'm excited about it. I can't wait to go out and fly it, really, man. I, I really can't wait to get out and fly it. Um, I'm excited about it. Um, one of my elevators is slightly off. That's something that I got to take care of before we go out and fly it. It's just a hair off. One of them's just a hair higher than the other. Um, so we got to we gotta fix that before we take it out and fly it. But this thing is sick. This is a beautiful plane. If you guys don't have an SU-30 and you have the, you have the, uh, the Skrilla to put out, to put, <clears throat> to buy one, um, then, uh, I would, I would do it. Um, and I did it in the right order too. Uh, I was actually supposed to have this last month, but I bought that Falker Wolf. I saw that Falker Wolf online and I was like, I, I that is like something that I, I, I want for my collection badly. Um, there are some things that I got to do to it to make it fly better, but I know those things because I've already done it to the Dynam, um, the Dynam one that you see behind me. I've, I've already taken that Dynam plane out and cleaned it all off. It's ready to go. Um, I've got the, the uh, Raptor down there. It's all cleaned off and ready to go. Um, I even cleaned up a couple of my other planes, my Bearcat and my, uh, my pits on the wall. I'm just trying, I'm trying to get them like wiped down and cleaned off. I've, I've, I've just been steadily coming through here and cleaning them all off. Um, but there's a lot of planes in here I want to fly, man. And you just, I, most of my planes are jets guys. And that's just, that's just kind of hard to do in the winter time here. Um, the warbirds really like the hard, the hard, um, uh, grass, but, uh, the jets, they're not really good on hard grass, you guys. It really beats the piss out of the retracks pretty good. Um, so it's it's it'll be a question of you know how nice is the field when I get there tomorrow uh, that I'll fly this. But there's a lot of planes. The the Falker Wolf is one of the ones that was a must have for me. Uh, and then uh, moving on from the Falker Wolf, um, I, I I knew that the SU30 was going to be next for me. 
That's why I got the SU-30. I, I knew I already had it in my mind that this plane was the next one. And it kind of sucks because everybody already had theirs and did their videos on theirs. Uh, but I didn't care. Um, I, I really wanted that Focke Wolf. Uh, that's just how badly I wanted the Focke Wolf, you guys. I mean, I put off this beautiful plane to get it. So was it worth it? I think so. I think that Focke Wolf is going to be great once I get it dialed in. Um, and then the next one on my list was the P-51. And um, that'll be next month. And that'll be, you know, like I said, I'm a little late on that one as well. But I don't care. Um, I've got my channel up to where I feel comfortable that I'll be at a thousand subs sooner or later. Um, I'm not trying to beat anybody to the punch. I'm not trying to step on anyone's toes. Uh, when I get my plane and I unbox it and I unveil it, that's when I do it, you guys. Um, it's not a race for me. It's not a matter of who gets what first or who does what first. I mean, for shit, I could have that plane at the beginning of the month just like the rest of you. It's just that's not what's important to me. Uh, what's important to me is you guys in the community – that's what's important to me. It's not about these planes. It's not about the, that radio. It's not about anything. It's about you guys in the community and the free and the friendships that we build while we're while we're in this community together, and the fact that all of us hate each other secretly, uh, but we love each other in front of one another. Um, that's a uh, that's a pretty cool thing that we have going too. So uh, John Hill's in here. Let me get John Hill a wrench. Um, <laughs> and I'm just kidding, you guys. Uh, but that's what it's about to me. Uh, it's not about going out. I mean, it's not about going out and flying plane. I mean, it is, that is the point of the channel. The point of the channel is to buy something, go out and check it out and let the community know about it. But for me, um, uh, it's just about being able to chill with you guys from time to time, do these live streams and hang out and chill and vent, uh, and do whatever you want to do in here, man, because I have this shit set at, you have to be kind of an adult to watch it. Um, I'm not messing around with that. I know I swear in my videos. I know that we have shitty things being going on, like some nasty grown-up talk going on in the uh, chat room from time to time. So I'm not going to allow a child to come in here. It's going to have that parental advisory thing when you start up one of my videos. Um, because uh, if I didn't, I'd probably get shut down pretty soon. So I'm not taking any chances, you guys. Uh, this is not a kid's show, if you, if you want to be honest. This is a bunch of adults in here. You know, except for Ethan, I know, but his dad knows his dad knows he's in here. But this is an adult group. I, I was checking my analytics the other day, and most of the people that watch my videos are between the ages of 45 and 65. So uh, this is definitely an adult thing. It's an adult show. It's an, for adult guys. This is our RC ha uh, habits together. And, um, and uh, if there's a kid in here, then he better have his parents' fucking permission because I swear I cuss. Uh, my guests cuss. And, uh, that's, 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 uh, that's their goddamn business. So, uh, uh, that's why I have it so that I, I don't, I don't, I say it that I don't think this is for children, uh, when I start my streams, uh, and I don't, I don't think this is for children. There should not be a six year old sitting in front of his television right now, watching Dave talk about a plane and dropping F bombs every sentence. Um, that's not what it should, that's not what this channel, this channel is not for children. If your children and your wives are watching, get them the fuck out of the room. <laughs> uh, yeah, farmer man. Hey man, what's up, dude? I'm just moving closer to the screen. I can't see from back where I'm at. Uh, thanks for coming in here, buddy. Good to see you, buddy. Drive safe. We're up and shout up RC. How am I? Oh, you guys are going back and forth selling stuff, huh? Um... I had this chair out of here earlier. I just had to stand that up. I thought it was going to fall again. Um, so, yeah, guys, um, I still have a little bit more cleaning to do in here uh, as well. Um, I want to get these planes. I, I want to hang, like, at least five of them up. If I can get five of the big ones off the ground, um, I'll be in a lot better shape here, man. I'll be in a lot better shape. Uh, like if I can get the F-15 and the F-22, um, I would like to sell that flex jet, but it's going to come without the power system in it, you guys. It's just going to have all the servos and all that stuff. Um, that thing is like a plug and play. It's, it doesn't have an Aurora in it either, and there's no Aurora in it. But if you wanted to buy an Aurora, you could and plug it, plug it all back in again. The one that I had was faulty, and so I took it out and just put my own system in it. Um, 
but that's a conversation for another day. If you want, if you want the damn thing, hit me up in the comment section below and I'll sell you an R plus. Uh, I know Roy was interested in it, but it'll be like an R plus from motion RC. It's just not going to have an ESC or an engine or a fan. You'll have to put one of those in yourself, but it'll have everything else. All the servos, everything already run the retracks, everything. Um, Channel 6 RC, real pilot ride. Oh, what are you guys talking about? Yeah, just let me know, Roy. It's no big deal, dude. It's all good. Um, I'm not, I'm not in any hurry to get rid of it. But it's, it's, uh, like I said, it's brand new. You guys saw it. I only flew it maybe what twice on the channel, uh, three times maybe. Um, and every time the thing flew great. It is a rock solid, steady plane. My problem is, is I have so many other planes that I need to fly, and that's just not one that I want to fly right now. Um, And it's too bad to say that because it is an awesome model. It's it's probably one of the best put together foamy models you've ever seen in your life. It, it's it's absolutely amazing. Um, it almost flies a little too good, and I think that's why I think that's why um, I'd rather fly something a little bit more challenging. That thing just flies super freaking easy, man. If you if you want to learn how to fly a plane and do tricks and stuff with your plane, that's the one to do, right? That's the one to get right there. And they even have a new one out the, uh, with uh, thrust vectoring now. Oh, yeah, and right from Roy's, all of that rain is going to turn into snow, and it's coming across the United States, and it's going to be here this weekend. I told you, that's the storm right there, Roy. That's the one that's coming to hit us. That's that big one that's coming across the top of the United States, man. It's going to meet up with another storm that's coming down from Canada, and it's going to blast into the East Coast, and, it's, and we're supposed to get a lot of snow real fast, real hard, all at once. Boom. We're like within an hour and a half, two hours, we're supposed to get like a foot and a half of snow. It's just going to dump it real fast and be gone. Uh, and those storms suck, dude, because uh, usually the next day it's like 50 degrees outside and all that stuff starts to melt and then it gets cold again and then it just all turns to ice and it's just, oh, it's just a pain in the ass after that, man. It's fun when the snow's all squishy and soft and you can jump in it and dive in it and stuff. But then that next day it gets freezing cold and then everything turns into like, like, and then you jump, try to dive into it and you, you cut yourself up and stuff. I mean, it's not soft after that. It sucks. Yeah. I live in Maine. Um, a North, North, Northeast, uh, Northeast, guy up here over, over, over above Boston. You know, we work here in Boston. We, we like the pats and we like to drink lagers and, 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 and microbrew beers and shit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> actually, I'm not from Maine. I just moved up here. I'm actually from California. That's why I don't have a northeastern accent like the rest of the guys up here. Um, I I still have that uh, that that California kid accent. That's where I was brought up. Born in Tennessee, and I grew up in California and in, uh, in Maine. I never developed a, a Maine accent. Uh, there's just no need of it. It doesn't even sound uh, English half the time. Uh, you have to guess words like, oh, what did you say? Ah, oh, that's what I thought you said. Your parents grew up in Maine? Or where? Up in Massachusetts and New England? That's right, Reckham Roy, California boy. Yeah, I'm not a valley boy. I was a mountain boy. We grew up in the mountains of California, but I was still a California boy, nonetheless. Oh, upstate New York. Okay, I got you. Yeah, that's. I mean, well, that's far. That's far. That's a, that's far, far enough up north where you're parallel with Maine. So, same weather that we get at least. Um. Oh, man, I think it's about that time, you guys. I'm about ready to shut down for the night, man. 
Um, anybody got any questions for me while I'm doing my shout outs? Um, so sh like once again, shout out to Skip Bill RC for getting, getting me started on this plane. Uh, shadow ops. Thank you yesterday during the day. You helped me out a little bit, getting me pointed in the right direction. And then, uh, Dave Marshall finished it off last night by going like, like, you know, page on page with me through the radio until we got to, uh, uh, the result that we needed, which was getting the ASC, uh, ASX switch, uh, turned on and, and, uh, and working properly. Uh, so shout out to Dave air Marshall Mondays is where I was at last night. If you guys want to go check out that episode, make sure you go over to air, uh, Dave Marshall, uh, the air Marshall and check it out. Um, really cool show last night. I called him and gave him some shit and I was eating ice cream and being all disrespectful during the call. So it was pretty cool. Um, I was just trying to be a dick and it worked. I mean, yeah, it worked. No, I'm just kidding guys. <laughs> uh, we were just having fun. Like we always do. Um, go over and check him out. Uh, also, uh, Bledsoe's trains has a live stream coming up here in, a, in an hour or two. Uh, don't, don't forget that one. You guys make sure you check out Bledsoe's trains tonight, his live stream. Uh, tomorrow we got Josh Weaven starting it off followed by GB Linden. Thursday, Hangar 51 will stay up with you all freaking night until the wee hours of the morning. Don't miss that. Um, Friday, Toba Line with me, you guys. If you guys want to come, I don't know if you guys do. It doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, and then we got Ryan, Pilot Ryan Media on, on Saturday, you guys, 9 p.m. Eastern time. He's always got something awesome going on. Uh, he's the uh, the king rat, the, the, top, the top of the charts. And uh, we're all trying to claw our way towards him uh, and trying to get up there and rank. Um, and then on uh, on Sundays, you got the Mary Boozers channel, and we're all trying to crawl for Mary Boozer as well. So uh, Mary Boozer's going down. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Mary Boozer's channel, 8 o'clock on Sundays. You guys check him out with Papa Boozer. Uh, he actually just painted up a P-51, one of the new E-Flight ones. He was painting one up the other night on the show. It was looking pretty nice. Uh I didn't stay very long. I, I just kind of dropped my donation and uh, uh, I went to bed, man. I wasn't feeling well that night. Um, I, uh, I actually did a live stream, started to feel nauseous towards the end of the live stream. So I, I, uh, I don't know, man. I just, uh, I, I didn't, uh, or was that? No, that was the next day. I haven't felt good for a while, guys, for a few days, man. My wife's completely sick right now too. So, uh, but those are the shout outs, you guys. Those are, that's, that's pretty much the week in this community, you guys. If you guys go through the community, all those shows are on. Uh, I mean, that's, that's the cool thing about this hobby and this community and YouTube is exactly what we have going on. And I hope that this community and, and this, this, uh, this uh, live stream, um, uh, the way we have this live stream set up, set up during the week, I really hope that builds into something. I hope that's something that people actually – uh, care about and want to see in the future and just watch it. Not if, if not watching it for RC, just watching it because we're entertaining motherfuckers. And that's, that's, that's what we do, man. We, we entertain, uh, we're in the entertainment business. If, if you don't see, um, and, and product reviews and stuff like that, that's, that's the, with an entertaining thing. So it is entertainment with either way you look at it, but, uh, that's it guys. Uh, let me check everything out up here. Peace. Everybody saying peace. Give them day. Keep them, uh, uh, keep them on, bro. Call me up anytime you need assistance, fucker. You got it, Dave. No, no shit, man. I know. I really appreciate that last night, man. I really do. Uh, hit every, like, uh, hit the like, everyone. An empty spot on Friday. Uh, who should I watch? <laughs> I got an, uh, I got an empty spot on Friday. Who should, who should I watch? Well, I'm, I think I'm the only one that comes on on Friday. If I'm not, I think, um, Right before my show, I believe uh, the Jackson uh, Jackson's channel uh, does a uh, RC um, live stream. Uh, but I'm not sure. I've never been to that one. I'm not sure what they do over there, so I can't really speak for it. Um, but the other ones that I that I named off, those are all good shows to go to, man. Uh, thanks a lot, Dakin. I appreciate that, man. Michael Roshka, see you later, bro. Peace, man. Um, yeah, man. I know you were joking, dude. I know. I know. <laughs> I know you are, dude. I know. Um, but anyways, guys. Oh, shit. This cold is kicking my ass, man. It, it's just like I'm, our, like my whole body's freaking hot. It just won't stop. It's like constant heat. And then I still have that pain in my shoulder, man. So I'm, 
I'm not doing so well, man. I'm getting old, man. And, and I, I like all the way up to 35, I was like, I don't feel it. I don't feel it. And then all of a sudden 38 came and it was like, mm, mm, mm. and that's, that's the way I felt all year, all year. I'm going into my 39th birthday this year and all year I just felt just beat down into the ground, man. Uh, I was fine all through 37 it just, and then 38 came and it just, it just hit me like a ton of bricks. So, uh, yeah, you, uh, you young guys out there be, uh, be aware for the age 38, be aware it's coming to a theater near you. Um, but that's all I got for you guys today. Uh, I will see you guys tomorrow at the flying field. I'm not going to live stream it. I'm just going to do the video and put it up like I used to Jeff's custom. Boom. Peace out, bro. Um, yeah, guys, that's it for me. I'm Dave. This is Dave's RC. We'll see you guys in the next one. I'm out of here, you guys. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Check out Bledsoe tonight. Bledsoe's Trains RC. Hit him up, you guys. He's got a live stream going on tonight. Give him your support. I'm Dave, and I'm out of here. See ya. Peace.